hopefully this runs exactly the same or I guess better than what it did before, but it seemed to be running fine. So we will now see if it starts. Welcome to the Always Up To Late channel. My name is Jonathan and we have a quick project we're gonna get through today in the garage, doing a little bit of maintenance on the W204. Uh, because of time and mileage, it's, uh, it's now time to go ahead and change out the spark plugs. Now I have done this once before on this car as well and then once prior the dealership did it as well. And I can just go over the steps and show you the tools and everything and show you that this process is generally not, not too bad to get through. Oh, right, and the tools that we're going to use today are a 3 8 inch drive ratchet, quarter inch drive ratchet. Now we also have our spark plug socket. As you can see, that, that should actually seat down in there. Now that's how that should look. It should hold it relatively stable in there, and the hex part should be all the way down in the shaft like that. And just as important as the spark plug socket, the spark plugs themselves, the plugs that we're using today are the Bosch, and I made extra certain to make sure that these say made in Germany here on the box. So right here you can actually see that it's stamped Germany right there, and then you can see the part number right here, YR7MPP33s. And this is Jonathan from the future. One other tool that you're going to need is a torque wrench of some kind, and on this box, it says to torque these to 17 foot-pounds. It looks like they're 23 Newton meters, I believe is what NM is. And the last two things are the dielectric grease. I'll put this on the end of the connector for the spark plug into the socket or the boot. And then I always use just the slightest bit of antices on the threads, making sure not to get any at all on the actual conductor, the part that sticks down into the, uh, the cylinder area there. And then paper towels just to make sure that we keep everything clean. Now to start this project, we're going to go ahead and pull off this front cover, just like that. Okay, now with that off, we're actually going to pull off this breather hose. The breather hose hooks into this uh, kind of manifold type deal. And then also going to disconnect both sides of these intake tubes. Okay, now that we have everything loose on here, we're going to pull upward and that way okay and then we pull upward on this side a little bit now we need to get these intake tubes okay well it just comes off all the way i guess well, that's fine. okay i want to get this intake tube back and down actually i'll just pull it off there you go okay so we have both tubes off and out of the way okay now we're going to lift gently watching this Go. Okay, so now that's loose and then we need to get this tab. There we go. Okay, so that's the last remaining thing back there. Is that. And then we can actually just pull that right out all in one piece just like that. And with the top of the, uh, the intake there removed, you can see that each one of these packs right here underneath each one of these is where the spark plug is going to be. Same on this side. It's relatively straightforward to get to once you get everything out of the way. Okay, now on the side here, we can see that we have this bolt right here. And then we have this bolt right here on this side. And both of these are going to be a T30. So I'm using my quarter inch drive ratchet here. So we'll go ahead and take these loose and gently pull this out. Make sure we don't pull too far on that wiring harness. And with the coil pack out, now you can see how far that boot extends down in. And then I can move the light here and yeah, you can see the spark plug is pretty far down in there. So that one came out pretty easy. What I was looking at there was making sure that the end of this boot wasn't uh, cracked or split in any way and everything seems to be pretty good working order on this one. 
And we're just going to do a quick comparison of the new plug compared to the old one. We just want to make sure that the length is the same, that the threads look to be about the same. If we compare the part numbers on it, it says 7MPP33, and this one also says 7 MPP33 in Germany. So I do believe that we are replacing like for like. All right, now in preparation to put this into the cylinder head, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of anti-seize. And this is really not necessary, but just in case I'm the next one to replace these spark plugs, I really would like to make sure that they are relatively straightforward to get out. And then we'll just put a little bit of dielectric grease here on the end. And that is too much, <laughs> but that's uh, that's my fault. So now we'll just waste some dielectric grease, unfortunately, but hey, it is what it is. And one last thing I'm gonna double check. I have a simple gauge here for spark plugs, and it says on the box that this one should be 0.032. I don't know if that's in focus or not. And I know that it says they're pre-gapped, but I just like to double check just to make sure, and it appears to be right on where it should be. Yeah, yeah, it's okay, so this one's perfect. So I am gonna check these actually because, you know, I know I'm supposed to trust the system, but I don't. So uh, I am gonna check the gap on these just to make sure. All right, now we have the spark plug seated down in the spark plug socket, and we're going to very gently hand thread it in to get it started. It's always a good idea to hand thread these in instead of just starting cranking with the ratchet immediately because it is possible to cross thread these things and then it creates even more problem than uh, I think what any of us really want to deal with uh, when we're doing a job like this. And to torque these down, we're going to put the socket and extension back in. Try to get it to seat down onto the plug. There we go. And now I have this set to the 17 pound feet. All right, now that that is torqued down, we're going to very gently reinsert the boot. Feels like it's seated properly. Go ahead and reinstall our bolts. Now in the same way as what I did with the spark plug, I'm gonna go ahead and hand start these if possible. Just to make sure I don't strip anything out while I'm doing this part. All right, and we have the one done. It's not a bad job, and I mean, especially the front ones. The front ones are pretty easy to get to. One note about this is that 17 pound feet feels way further than what I would actually tighten it to if I were just guessing and hand tightening that thing. But I did double check my torque wrench and made sure that it is torque wrenching, I guess. And it seems to be right on the money where it should be. And uh, yeah, so the 17 pound feet seems about right. And once I got it there, I realized that it, it actually feels correct. Like it feels like it should. So I'll go ahead and get the rest of these swapped out and I won't make you sit through that. I'll just go ahead and hyperlapse through that part. First piece to go back on is the last piece we took off and it's this intake assembly deal. Go ahead and reattach our intake hoses here. And don't forget to rehook up this breather piece here. There we go. And the final piece. Nothing should move around too much. Everything should be very stable, just like that. Now, I, I do want to note again that this is not trying to fix a problem. This was a mileage or time recommendation to change. So, Hopefully this runs exactly the same, or I guess better than what it did before, but it seemed to be running fine. So we will now see if it starts. Starting to get a little bit cold here in the garage again, may kick on the heater to, uh, to warm things up a little bit, but we got spark plugs done, and I think a couple other upcoming projects on the W204 are that I have a slight oil leak at the oil accumulator that's at the back passenger side of the engine. I have one of those on order, and I will get to, uh, get to swap that out at some point in time in the near future. It looks okay. It looks like it's not going to be that that bad. It looks like there may be a bolt or two that's kind of hard to get to with the location, but that's that's coming up in the near future. Also have a slight oil leak coming out of the cam plugs as well, so we'll do those at the same time. And uh, of course, finally, we're getting back to some F-250 projects as well. 
Oh yeah, she's still out there. Looking all nice and uh, ready to play in the snow. So those will be coming in the near future. Uh, a couple of those would be a double shock kit for the front. So we're gonna make it ride a little bit smoother. Uh, we have a little bit of rust starting on one of the cab corners. So we're gonna be going through getting that sorted out as well. And I have a couple other things to do to my wife's car as well. So I'll put together some videos for those. Uh, if you like this video, please tap that thumbs up button and leave a comment. If you have any suggestions or critiques, please let me know. I love having conversations in the comments and I will catch you in the next video.